Well, good evening, folks, and welcome once again. And happy to be with you on this Friday evening. Happy that the Sabbath hours will soon be upon us. The busyness of the week will be over, and we will be able to relax and enjoy a time of rest with one another and with our Lord. Let's pray before we get into a very important topic for the evening. Yes, it'll be following along the same vein we always have been, and I hope that's okay. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, be with us this evening. Send your Holy Spirit to rain down upon us. Shine upon us and be gracious to us, Lord, as we spend time in your word, as we contemplate an important message that is needful and present truth for today. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to read to you from Hebrews chapter 11, Hebrews chapter 11 uh, and verse 7. Hebrews 11, 7. And in Hebrews 11, verse 7, we read, By faith, Noah, being warned of God, of the things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteous, which is by faith. So, Noah was warned. God told him to build a boat. He built that boat, which saved his family because of his righteousness by faith in the Lord. And he did some other things along the way. We're going to read a little about that now. We know the Bible says, as it was in the days of Noah, so will it be at the end of time. You and I are modern day Noah. Our ark is our relationship with Jesus. A saving relationship with Jesus is the ark that we need to be preparing. Noah had 120 years. I don't know how long we have, but Noah not only prepared an ark for himself, but it was sufficient to fit anyone else who wanted to be saved along with him, and he shared a last day message for the people of his generation, which you and I need to be doing now. Let's read from the pen of inspiration and see what is said about this. Shipboard Meditations, 1885, and here we read, and this is from Manuscript 17, if you're looking for it. It was through Noah's consistent faith and works combined that condemned the world. He not only preached present truth appropriate for that time, but listen carefully, but he acted every sermon. Are we today simply preaching present truth, telling other people what they need to do to be saved? Is it possible we're giving information to others for their salvation, but we are not acting upon it ourselves and thus being in our own ark ready for salvation? Is it possible? That's a question we each need to ask ourselves. Had he never lifted his voice in warning, his works, his holy character among the corrupt and ungodly would have been condemning sermons to the unbeliever and dissolute of that age. He bore himself with a Christ-like patience, meekness under the provoking insults, taunts, and mockery. His voice was often heard in prayer to God for his power and help that he might do all the commandments of God. This was a condemning power to the unbelieving. Now, I know that I myself have been around people uh, when I wasn't serving God and even early in my walk who, by the way they lived, they didn't have to say anything to me. I felt condemned. I wasn't upset with them. I just realized that I could see how they were living and how God was working with them. And it was a condemnation on the way I was living and the fact that I needed to make changes in my heart and in my life. In fact, that's part of the reason that I ended up being back in the church was the silent witness and testimony of the good folks of Holland, Michigan Church and my sister Heidi and her husband. A shout out to all of them. Uh, it was by their simple example and living a holy and godly life that began to draw me back into the arms of Jesus. So a, the best sermon ever preached truly is a life lived for Jesus. You and I should be doing that each and every moment of each and every day. Let's read on. But the time comes when the last appeal of Noah is made to the guilty race. He bids them yet once again heed the message of warning and find refuge in the ark. He stretches out his hands to the supplication with voice full of sympathy, with quivering lips and tearful eyes. He tells them his work is done. 
but the loud, coarse mocking and scoffs and insults more determined are heaped upon Noah. Enthusiastic, fanatic, crazy falls upon his ear. He bids them all farewell, and he and his family enter the ark, and God shut the door. You have to imagine that he built relationships with some of these people. They were his friends. He cared deeply for them, but he had to give the final warning and recognize that he and his family needed to listen to God and be obedient as much as it hurt to say goodbye to all of these people for the very, very last time. The Lord shut the door. Up to that time, God had opened a door whereby the inhabitants of the old world might find refuge if they believed the message sent to them from God. But that door was now shut and no man could open it. Probation was ended. You and I know there's a door that has been shut and cannot be opened and pretty soon the final probation will be closed and that will be it. From that point forward, he who is just will be just still, and he who is unjust will be unjust too. And we don't know how long that is. We have but right now to be building the ark, which is our saving relationship with Jesus for ourselves, and by living a life that is a testimony and a condemnation to people who are not doing that so that they may see and may change their lives and may change their hearts and accept the same saving relationship that you and I, Lord willing, are enjoying and walking in just now. The long forbearance of God had ceased. The figures in the books of God's reckoning had been accumulating. The cup of the unjust was full. Mercy then ceased, and justice took the sword of vengeance. There was a shut door in Noah's time. There was a shut door to the unbelievers in the destruction of Sodom, but an open door to Lot. There was a shut door to the inhabitants of Tyre, Tyrus, and a shut door to the inhabitants of Jerusalem who disbelieved but an open door to the humble believing who those who obeyed God. Thus it will be at the end of time. So let me read that one more time. But an open door to the who? The humble, the believing, the faithful, to those of us that are spending time in God's word every day, getting to know him, hearing his voice. And like the Bible says, my sheep hear my voice and they know me. That happens by time in God's word. When we have that, those who obeyed God, thus it will be at the end of time, there will be, and there is right now, an open door for you and I, and for our loved ones, and for our neighbors, and for the world. But it's not going to last long, brothers and sisters. Let us lead by example. Let us show the world that there is a way to live for Jesus. There is salvation from all of the junk and clutter and mess that is going on, and it is a relationship with Jesus. You guessed it. It comes from spending time with him, from spending time in his word. I don't know what else to say, folks, but call people back to God's word. I believe that is the most urgent thing we need to be doing right now, calling people to spend time in God's word, to get to know him while there's still time. Let's pray. Father in heaven, Lord, today we're watching and we're here worshiping together because we love you. We acknowledge that every day, but I hope it's more than an acknowledgement. I hope it's a way of life. Lord, speak through me to each one here this evening uh, a message that would let us know that we need to have you in our life. Speak through each one who is listening to their neighbors, to their loved ones, to their friends, a clear message, not just by proclamation, but by lifestyle and by faith in you so that many will be called into your throne of grace and will find love and mercy and acceptance and freedom from all the weight and sin and care of this world. Lord, bless us now as the Sabbath hours come upon us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, folks, blessings. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your snowy evening. Uh, I know it's beautiful here. I'm enjoying it. And I am, by the way, very glad that we did our little final inspection and walkout in our old place, and it went well today. So I'm thanking the Lord to not be divided and trying to keep things going in two separate places. That's all done, and thank the Lord, and we're happy to be in our completely done moving over to our new home. I can't say we're fully moved in. There'll be a little few things to do, but I'm thankful for that. Happy Sabbath. Have a wonderful evening, and I hope to see you at our Desire of Ages study in a few moments. Blessings and good night.